Kita tunggu sekejap eh Ramai lagi nak masuk tu okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim uh, The topic uh, which has been given to me is a bit tough Okay, in the sense that um, I'm not the expert in the Islamic scholar and not, I'm also not the expert in the plastic surgery but I would try my best to deliver the, the topic, okay? Okay, to start with, uh, the topic basically plastic surgery in Islamic perspective. But before we go into detail about the Islamic perspective, we have to understand what, the, what is the meaning of plastic surgery. Okay? When we talk about plastic surgery, this is the image that you might imagine in yourself, right? Okay, look at this picture. What can you understand from this picture? So basically, it shows you basically always woman, okay? And then from old, trying to be young, okay? Worry about being old. And then try to reshape the face to be beautiful. That's, that's why always we associate plastic with woman. But it's not true nowadays, actually. Okay, so by definition, plastic surgery meanings surgery which is performed for correction or restoration of form and function. So when we talk about plastic surgery, we always think about cosmetic. But actually, there are two main components in plastic surgery, which is cosmetic and the other one is reconstructive. In fact, the truth is actually the majority of plastic surgery is actually reconstructive, it's not cosmetic. So, we have to understand what is cosmetic surgery, okay? Cosmetic basically procedure that is performed on normal parts, okay? That's why I highlight the word normal parts of the body with the purpose of improving a person's appearance and or removing the signs of aging. It, in Western country, it is very common. I believe so, right? Okay, but how what about in Asia? In our country, what do you think? Hmm? Is, it no, is it common? It become more common, become more popular. You will, be, you will be surprised when you look at this statistic. It shows that, okay, in 2009, the leading country of plastic surgery, and then to be um, uh, precise, uh, the cosmetic surgery, the Korea is the leading country which is perform um, the plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery. Okay, ini semua yang K-pop, semua semua tu, okay, become so popular. In fact, when you look at the statistics, United States actually lower compared to the. South Korea, okay? Okay. There are uh, this is the example of plastic surgery, okay? Which is breast augmentation, liposuction, rhinoplasty, eyelid surgery, abdominoplasty. Okay, the word is a bit medical, but um, let me explain one by one, okay? This is just example. Okay, breast augmentation. Basically, you want to make it big, bigger than the actual, the actual one that you have. Okay, uh, look at this picture. It's a breast augmentation where you put something there. If you look at the picture, the white part is actually the silicone. So that's why we call it uh, implantation. So this is the, uh, to make the size of the breast a bit bigger because some women not happy with the breast, right? With the size, I mean. Some of them are flat-chested, so they don't feel like beautiful. So, because of this uh, procedure, they feel better. That's the reason. Okay, so breast augmentation, rhinoplasty. Okay, basically you actually repair your nose to make it the way you want it. Of course, lah, takkan nak jadi makin peni kan? Makin mancung lah. Okay, so basically you reshape the uh, the bone of the nose. Okay, this is an example of a celebrity in Western country. I believe you kenal kan? Okay, siapa ni? Wah, oh, kenal semua. Kate Winslet. Okay, you look at the nose. It looks better before and after. Okay, 
liposuction. So basically, you just suck the fat. Okay. I, the reason I put this uh, picture, man, because like I said, people always associate uh, plastic surgery with women, but it's not true. Okay. Men also obsessed with their appearance nowadays. So look, uh, the, basically, this is the a picture on your. The first picture on your right is actually the before the surgery. After the liposuction, become flat tummy. All right. I'm giving you good example. Okay. All right. Because the aim most of the plastic the cosmetic surgery to make you look more beautiful. Right. Okay. Can you detect any changes? Any different from before and after? What What can you see? Huh? Ah, yes, breast. Huh? Really, you can see the breast, the size become bigger. Okay, what else? Look at the chin. Look at the nose. All right. So she become beautiful. More. In fact, before the surgery, she's already beautiful to me. But people are so obsessed, right? Okay. This is good example. But unfortunately, all right. As you can see, not all actually plastic surgery or to be precise, this cosmetic surgery leading to something that you wanted. Sometimes it can cause you disaster. All right? You can see. Tapi semua orang kenal kan? Michael Jackson. Okay? Before and after. Which one is better? Yes. Before. It looks better. It's more natural. But now, the face becomes so fake. It's like a... Totally, totally different person, right? So do you remember, even though cosmetic, the aim is to make you be better in terms of appearance, but sometimes will end up you with disaster. Okay? This is another disaster story. I believe you have heard, you have read somewhere about men actually sues ex-wife for having ugly baby. Okay, look at the picture. Both parents are really. You know, beautiful. The husband is handsome. The wife is beautiful. But look at the babies, right? So we are trying to um, deny Allah's creation. But do remember, the genetic we cannot change. So what happened? Look at the children. But it doesn't matter. It's, the problem is it create problem in the relationship because the husband didn't actually uh, actually initially the she he assumed that the wife having an affair with another man because the children look different from them okay uh actually this is the uh, the original face of the wife before and after okay it's so different so look at this actually the aim basically most of the women to look beautiful to be a better person to increase your um uh Confidence when you actually facing with uh, people, but end up disaster. The marriage rocking, and they got divorced, and somehow the husband win the lawsuit, lah. Okay. Okay. Now the next one is reconstructive surgery. Okay. What does it mean? Just now I mentioned there are two main components in plastic surgery. The, uh, the first one is cosmetic. The other one is reconstructive. So basically, reconstructive surgery it is performed. To correct function, uh, functional impairment caused by burns, trauma, injury, and congenital defect. Okay, so basically, burn, for example, uh, because of the burn, they tend to get contracture of your elbow, for example. So the function has impaired. So we have to correct that. Okay, congenital defect, uh, for example, cleft palate. Okay, cleft palate. Bahasa Melayu apa? Ah, sumbing, yes, yeah, sumbing. So, itu semua adalah congenital defect yang kita nak reconstruct. Okay, because the function already impaired, dia nak swallow susah, breathing sometimes having problem. So, that's the reason why we doing the surgery. Okay, this is the picture uh, of cleft palate, sumbing. After the surgery, looks better, right? You know, just look better, but the aim basically to restore the function. Okay. Okay. Just now I mentioned um, breast augmentation or something like that. It sounds like unethical, right? But in certain condition, where breast reconstruction is actually something good, 
we don't call it uh, breast augmentation, but breast reconstruction. Uh, this is for women who actually had uh, breast cancer. They remove the breast, right? So after that, no breast. They feel depressed. They feel the relationship with the husband is a bit, you know, uh, difficult. So we can actually offer breast reconstruction for selected cases. Okay, um, they take the part of the uh, tissue from the tummy, okay, from the picture you can see, and then we can create a new breast on the right side of the breast, okay? Now, the difficult part for me to explain, okay, to answer the, the topic which is given to me, Islamic view on plastic surgery. Is it halal or haram? Okay. Okay, based on the International Islamic Fiqh Academy, uh, they actually had a conference in 2007 in Malaysia, in Putrajaya. They had a really discussion about the, what is the general regulation and condition to say whether it is halal or, or haram. Okay? This is not from me. Okay? So basically, the general regulation <coughs> Surgery should achieve a recognized benefit in sharia, meaning restoring function, correcting a defect, or returning the form to a normal state. Like I, like I mentioned before, for example, burn patient. Burn patient, when they had contracture, we have to correct back the contracture so that they can, they, the, the, whatever the, the elbow or whatever the affected organ, will function as normal. And the uh, good example just now, when I put the picture of the baby with cleft palate, then we correct the congenital defect to, to a normal state. Okay, that's num rules number one. And then surgery should not result in harm, exceeding the anticipated benefit. And this matter should be decided by trustworthy specialists. Because for all surgery, all surgery, they carry some risk. So every time we offer surgery to our patient, we have to outweigh the, the risk. So if they give more benefit to the patient, then meaning it is worth to do the surgery. If you think cause more harm to the patient, should not offer the surgery. So basically, that's why we need a trustworthy specialist. So who are they? We, as a Muslim doctor, we should be the trustworthy specialist because if you talk about non-Muslim, of course, we as a doctor, we do have our ethics. But sometimes, when it comes to money, people forget about that. Okay? Okay. Uh, rule number three, a qualified or specialized physician should perform the surgery. And if not, the consequences will be his or her responsibility her responsibility, okay? So, need a specialized doctor. The surgical operation should be performed with the permission of the patient who has requested the surgery. This is like you when you get consent from the patient. You have to explain the risk. You have to get the permission from them. Not just simply you do the operation for your own sake, for your scientific research, okay? That's not allowed, okay? The specialized plastic surgeon should make the patient who will undergo the operation fully aware of the risk and complication, okay? Both expected and potential of the undergoing the operation. Because when I put the picture there, like liposuction, it looks simple. You think it's oh, what, just seduk lemak je kan? Seduk lemak, so easy. No. If you ever come across this uh, story about, uh, I think, Malaysian, who had liposuction and died after the surgery. It looks simple, but that's a complication. Nak cantik punya pasal, kan? Okay? And there is no other form of treatment that will be less harmful and invasive for the body than the surgery. Okay. The rules for seeking medical treatment should be maintained. Meaning, you have to maintain your aura. That ini yang... Uh, at the moment, uh, in our country, uh, we are still moving towards that, yeah? And there should be no violation of the textual evidence in Sharia. 
such as the prophet saying, this is something which is um, whatever clearly stated in the hadith. Uh, for example, in this hadith was narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Allah has cursed women who tattoo or have themselves tattooed, who pluck eyebrow or have them pluck, and women who separate their front teeth for beauty, altering what Allah has created. Okay? So, if you think, because this is quite clear, if you think uh, something go against this, so it shouldn't. You shouldn't allow your patient to have this. Okay? Another hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas, the woman who supplies false hair and the one who asks for it, the woman who plucks eye, eyebrow or have them pluck, the woman who tattoo and the one who, have, who, who has it done where it is no disease to justify it have been cursed. Okay? It's very simple. Sounds simple, but it's not easy, eh? Okay? Another rule, okay? So when we talk about Shari'ah rule, it is permissible if, okay, as, uh, restoring the form of a part of the body to its original condition in which human beings are created. This is due to the saying of, uh, of Almighty Allah, verily we created man of the best statue. All right? So basically, uh, uh, correcting congenital defect also permissible. Removing or severely misshapen feature that is causing the person psychological or physical harm. All right. So if the defect really caused um, psychological disturbance, uh, then uh, you actually allowed to do the correction. All right. So in what condition that it is not allowed? To change a person's natural appearance. For example, the picture that I showed you before, to change the shape of the nose. Even though you don't use bangkok ke, ke, apa ke, tak cantik ke, kembang ke, you still can breathe right. You still function like normal. So there is no way you can change the shape of your nose because it's tak cantik, it's not attractive. Okay, the other one is to remove the wrinkle, which is quite popular. Women especially, so scared. Okay, alama ada banyak la keduk, keduk sana keduk sini. So nowadays, they the simplest way they inject botox, they do facelift things like that, which is not allowed. Okay. So uh, in conclusion, the rule in Islam is that indu individuals should be satisfied with the way Allah has created them. However, the practice of plastic surgery, as long as it is done for the benefit of patient, even it is clearly considered changing the creation of Allah is unlawful. Islamic law is ambiguous regarding cosmetic surgery. Its objection to consider is not absolute. It is rather an objection to exaggeration and extremism. Okay, as our Prophet Muhammad said, Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. Okay, with that, thank you very much.